Hey everybody, so it's been a little while since I've put out uh, an Ash Kelly model and then so what we're going to look at here is very fortunately an Ash Kelly model and this one is called Understanding Geometry Through Primes, a new model of structural intelligence. Uh, I don't have, uh, the notebook was shared with me directly so I don't have permission to share the notebook directly with you. I've built a few things based off of this model and then so uh, I'll showcase and, and showcase it all to you and share those with you but 100% all of this is uh, architected, conceived of, etc. by Ash Kelly. And then so I want that to be very clear and prominent within this. And then so within this, what exactly are we going to look at here? So within in conventional machine learning, models are often trained to classify or regress over data sets with arbitrary structure. While these methods can yield practical results, they typically rely on large volumes of data and lack true interpretability. Uh, the bottom line here, so I've gone over this a lot on my channel, right? Uh, it it's all breaks down to the concept of the um, underlying geometry that these models learn off of. Essentially, you give them a data set, they're not learning off of the data set itself, right? They're learning off of patterns of the data set and then things that they pull apart and pick apart within that. Uh, I've gone over that a lot on my channel and, and uh, like especially recently, right? It's been um, documented and proven 100% like that this is um, exactly what exists and what goes on. That there's essentially um, a geometric latent space that gets created by the models and then the models are like literally uh, plotting the, the latent space that exists with in this environment um, and then basing and, and, and like um, creating decisions based off of that. So it's based off of a geometry, right? They're navigating the geometry of their latent space overall. And then so um, within that, uh, it gets important to um, understand. And we, the next question is, is how exactly does that work overall? Uh, and then so um, within that, like the, and how exactly do they like navigate that space is the important question, right? Um, and then so that's what this dives into. And then the, the core architecture that Ash Kelly builds out within this is a twist field dynamics within that prime space. So at the heart of the model is a transformation from conventional eight dimensional data into what's called a twist field or a structured embedding over 20 distinct prime indices derived using uh, sigmoid transformations in each 8D vector is translated into a twist signature where each dimension is resonantly projected over the rotations modulated by the primes. So the transformation encodes how the geometry of a point arises from its irreducible multipl multiplicative roots, how changes in space reflects interference and collapse among primes, and a non-linear and non-symbolic structure that mirrors quantum logic but emerges from number theory direct. So essentially, the models are learning structure and not labels. Instead of asking the model to learn a classification task or to memorize coordinates, uh, it's trained on a GRU or a gated recurrent unit to predict the evolution of twist fields over time. That is, the model was given sequences of geometric data encoded as a prime resonance field and asked to learn how the underlying structure flows. So. The model is just uh, like going through um, this logic here, which is um, interesting, and, and it's um, the kind of I envision it as um, the kind of almost exact opposite process that that currently goes on. So, and, and but very similar as well. Orthogonal would be uh, the better word, right? Because uh, with the current process, what happens is you take the data set, and we'll call in this instance an eight-dimensional data set, and then you uh, the model is the latent space that it's projected to is typically like a two-dimensional latent space. So uh, it's flattened, right, from two from eight D to two D. And then that 2D space is what the model navigates. Within this, the change is from 8D to 20D, so giving it more detail as opposed to uh, less detail uh, overall within this is kind of the, the bottom line. And the important thing to, to note and, and to highlight within that is that changing the dimensions of this changes the shape of the data overall, which is very important, right? And then that's like uh, that changing of dimensions is uh, to me like the most important uh, uh, directional and dimensional measurement that these models are making. <laughs> I think that flat out what they're doing is, is so whatever you are um, embedding the uh, data set to start off with, so in this instance in eight dimensions, that's like their, their, the base starting point, like right, like this is the, the um, starting zone and then from there 
it gets transformed from 8D to 20D, uh, and then the model is measuring that distance in between that and everything that is that falls in between those things, right? And then that becomes very clear and very predictable for the model. And then you give it enough detail around that and enough examples of that, and it understands to, and it's able to predict that fully that that um, evolution from eight dimensions to 20 dimensions and exactly what would occur within the shape there. And that's essentially what we're looking at here, right? So uh, we uh, the first step is is that Ash Kelly trains the model uh, on uh, this uh, uh, this uh, particular formula, uh, and then the mean squared squared error is very low with in this, right? This is, I mean, like like a lossless, essentially, uh, like virtually lossless. Um, and then, um, so the final uh, model evaluation is that the model takes to this training of this this distance measurement that is created very well overall. Okay, cool. Between eight D and, and twenty D in this instance. And then, so uh, the next instance is to like um, train it and then uh, test recall and accuracy very specifically, right? And then, so uh, here are the scores that uh, Ash Kelly gets out of this. And then, so the very nice scores, right? Um, essentially, so uh, for the first three primes, it's 100% on the decoder recall, 1.0 equals 100%. Um, and then the accuracy is uh, between 90 and 82%. Um, highlighting this at like overall, like so, uh, Ash Kelly is a better mathematician than me, flat out. Like, I like uh, overall, uh, he invented um, all of this overall, right? So I'm, I'm going to, uh, I replicate this. I, I don't know how he got exactly this. Um, and then so um, when I replicate and, and I go through, so um, this is like a, my uh, proving out that the work exists and then also like, a, you know, just replicating it overall uh, as for second eyes, <laughs> I guess, you know? Uh, and then so um, within this, uh, my notebook is, uh, and explaining out what's going on in here is like kind of the, the big idea in one sentence is that instead of training AI to memorize patterns like a student cramming for a test, we're teaching it to discover the uh, hidden mathematical laws that shape reality itself. And then so starting off with something like music, you know how a guitar string makes different notes when you press different frets. Uh, each note has a specific frequency, like for example, 440 hertz is A, 523 uh, hertz is C, uh, high C, etc. And uh, these aren't random numbers. They follow deep mathematical patterns that make music sound harmonious. And then so what if the entire universe works like this? What if everything from the shape of a flower to the orbit of planets follows hidden mathematical frequencies that we just haven't learned to hear yet? So within this We've established that models uh, operate and learn off of a geometric space and a geometric latent space, right? And then another thing that like people are very quick and very prominent to point out with these models is that they often struggle with uh, even sometimes like basic arithmetic, right? Like so, um, on on one hand, their their entire existence is geometry and geometry based and and geometry and algebra, right? We'll call it the, those two concepts because it's, it's both of those concepts. They're navigating their geometric space via algebra. And then so they have a deep base understanding of these concepts, but they don't have a deep base understanding sometimes of um, advanced geometry, advanced calculus, et cetera, like, which is kind of intriguing. So why does that occur, right? And then the uh, very first instinct would be just to like laugh at it and point it out like a lot like uh, I can't count the number of R's in strawberry right <laughs> come on like and then so but within that like why um, is the the bigger question and then like you break down that why and then to me it be like the why is very simple if you like break it down philosophically right to me the why is is that uh, half of math is real and half of math is not real <laughs> like that's uh, i mean uh, like the most um simplistic way of framing that that i could possibly think of and i think that that framing gives ash kelly a lot of credit within that particular framing right like um that particular framing is very important overall to like knowing uh, ash kelly's methods knowing this model uh like that is a, a core uh, part of this philosophical concept, right? Like none of this would work overall if that weren't true. Like, so it's debatable, philosophically debatable. Like, um, is that concept, like, uh, is that concept real, right? Like it's, it's been a philosophical question my entire life. Is math real? Yes or no? 
And then I think we've started to come closer to that and then like um, really started to reach the conclusion um, half of math is real and half isn't. There's some parts that are real and some that are human construct, right? Um, and then so within that, it's it's discerning and then proving that. And, and then so to me, these types of models, this type of research is just proving that. Like it's just proving it backwards, right? <laughs> like, uh, 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 and uh, I can only speak for myself on this, but for me, like I don't care to be the discover of these things like I, I could not ever care less right um i care if it works and then why it works and then trying to to figure out and and break down and deduce that and then this is just the uh, simplest deduction that i've been and and ash kelly has been able to piece together as to uh, exactly why and how this is occurring um and then these models just show like it works <laughs> it works in practice why does it work in theory uh can leave that up to like phd students to figure out and then so within this uh the problem with today's ai current ai is like a very sophisticated parrot essentially you show it a million pictures of cats and it learns to recognize cats you feed it a million billion sentences it learns to write like humans you give it chess games it learns to play chess but it's not actually understanding any Thing within that right it's just finding well it's finding the uh, patterns in the data like recognizing that furry things with pointy ears are probably cats and then so this approach has three big problems one you need massive amounts of data two ai can't explain why it makes these decisions and three it fails completely when it sees completely something truly new and then so how does this solve that? First of all, uh, we're utilizing what we'll call the universe's building blocks, which are uh, prime numbers, right? Um, and then these prime numbers, they just happen to be everywhere in nature. Cicadas em emerge every 13 or 17 years. It's literally, uh, there's two groups of cicadas, right? There's some groups, some uh, uh, spawn every 13 years, some every 17 years. Both of them happen to be prime numbers. Sunflower seeds spiral in patterns based on prime-related sequences, and then quantum physics involves prime-like patterns. Like, all of these uh, prime patterns within nature kind of just prove out as a starting point that uh, what if primes aren't just mathematical curiosities, but they're actually kind of like the, the source code of uh, reality, if you will. And so, um, Within this, essentially, we train the model, or Ash Kelly trains the model to uh, speak prime, essentially. Um, so instead of showing the AI millions of examples, he taught it to translate everything into the language of prime numbers. So everything becomes a prime fingerprint. The AI learns the grammar of reality, um, and then the results showcase themselves. And then so within a traditional AI, what occurs is that it sees, so this looks like previous examples that I've memorized, it then thinks pattern matching based off of those statistics, and then it fails when it encounters something truly new. Whereas with prime-based AI, it sees that this has a prime signature of 2.3, 0 0.8, 1.7, 0 0.4, indicating specific mathematical relationships. So it's, I mean, uh, graph theory what people want to do within that and i've been a big proponent of graph theory overall things like that i just think that they're barking slightly up the wrong tree right <laughs> i think that this is uh more indicative of the graph theory that people should be implementing within these things and i'm going to show you something very cool in just a second that that comes out of this too that uh, kind of backs that up right um and then so then therefore it takes that 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 seeing what it sees within the prime number signatures and then it thinks so according to the fundamental laws that i've discovered this pattern should evolve in this specific way uh, and then it succeeds because it understands the underlying mathematical principles and not just the surface patterns. Like diving deeper into this, like so here's uh, you know the 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 showcase of uh the exact outputs here that i'm able to, to reproduce um and then so i essentially I, I train the model uh my loss rate is a lot higher than or starts higher than ash kelly's but then goes down very significantly and very dramatically i do only train it for 150 epochs so that's probably what i do wrong here i think uh within this i should have trained it for a lot more epochs but so even with 100 epochs i'm able to match the the level two classification of 1.0 uh but my f1 score is a uh, 0.77 whereas uh ash kelly's getting like 0 0.90. So again, I think if I trained for 500 epochs or so, I'd fix these. But then my numbers go down dramatically. I think not training for long enough, but I get what the data that I need out of this, right? And this is like the, the to me, this is the, the, the big visualization within this. I have a better visualization in just a second. But so uh, we have here that the data start. So on the left hand side, this is the original data set, right? And say that this is the, the shape of the data set the model gets fed. In. And, and then what we do 
or what this model does is it then utilizes this twi prime twist field and then it takes that eight dimensional vector and then it uh, turns it into a 20 dimensional vector uh, and then based off of the first 20 prime numbers and then you essentially get uh, each number, like each uh, vector is assigned a unique number within this, and then you get this unique calculation and this unique shape. And then so the model then learns the difference between this original 8D vector and this prime twist field, right? Two very different shapes. And then these are both representative of the same exact thing. Like think of it like, so on the left-hand side, it's in English, on the right-hand side, it's in Spanish, and then it's just, uh, it's translating the difference and finding the difference between between the two is like really kind of what goes on within that, right? And then so Ash Kelly sent all of this over to me. Uh, and then the very first thing that I wanted to do was like uh, understand and, and wrap my head around exactly what I was looking at, right? So I do that and I, I uh, first thing I do, I, I do that often with uh, like concepts, right? <laughs> and then so kind of one of the first things I'll do is I'll, I'll pass it through a model to see what the model does with it, reflect on that, and then kind of go from there and build from there. Uh, in this instance, I was just playing around with plot four. I gave it um, like the like uh, Ash Kelly's notebook uh, and then and it literally just created this artifact was <laughs> the very first thing that it did um, and then I can uh, so I can play this animation here uh, and you can see it going here right and then so this is the the prime resonance field and this model is this, this is the model um, going and and updating itself like so think of the like these are the model weights right like think of these as as the model weights and then so as the model is is going through and, and doing these calculations it's a like a um, self-updating process right like uh this to me is is much closer structurally to like a uh, brain like structure than the structures that we're currently working with uh, this model is able to update its weights as you can see here uh, on the fly and in ways that current models can't update their weights i think that this is like um this uh, a weight updating mechanism that we're looking at here and, and how this is working here is uh, kind of to me the missing element like that that real time element is uh, what's missing with an AI currently right now right so then this visualization demonstrates how 8D ge geometric data transforms into a 20 dimensional prime resonance field uh, each prime creates a twist signature that encodes irreducible structural information the GRU learns to predict how these twist fields evolve achieving extraordinary accuracy by capturing the underlying mathematical laws rather than memorizing patterns and then so that's what essentially goes on here and then you get a self-learning self-referential uh, network that it, 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 you can literally see um, what's going on uh, within those equations and, and and that balance overall so super cool uh, to me uh, overall and you can play with these things right and and so uh, highlighting if you play with these things it's um, you just want to stop the animation and then start, um, you know, part of it, AI coding, right? But uh, it like see, so just stop and then start, uh, and it'll it'll improve. But so like, uh, it, this was made in like two seconds, so I can't complain overall about that that functionality. Uh, and uh, this is a super amazing overall to see, right? And and like, I mean, if you want to see like this is working and and, and how you can, you know change adjust uh etc like different concepts within the model super easy to do that here right and then adjusting these uh, these levers down just naturally of course are going to um change the the, the <laughs> you know like like in different directions either faster or slower uh the way that the model updates overall so you can you know like play around with it uh, i think it's super cool so uh, i'll leave a link to both this notebook um as well as uh this uh artifact here um the original notebook like uh, ash class where if you want to dive deeper into this like ash kelly is the creator of the prime number neural network so anything related to like uh prime number neural networks the prime number neural network if i see this later in like cornell or harvard papers etc uh ash kelly is the original person that that was uh this <laughs> and so i'm like this is uh ash kelly's work and i want to highlight that um and then so ash kelly was um fortunate and and we were fortunate enough for ash kelly to share it with moonshot labs and then so here we are but this is an ash kelly project and so if you like the sub content please like and subscribe thank you very much